Normally when you do documentaries and podcasts, you kind of start with a weird thing and the more you dig into it, the more boring it becomes, right? It becomes more normal, right? So it's like, oh yeah, they did that for that reason, they did that for that reason. Okay, so I kind of understand how this thing went. This was the opposite. It started weird and it only got weirder. Hi, I'm Mark Fennell. I am a journalist and I've got a documentary called The Mission on SBS uh, and I'm here in Happy Mag to talk about how that very strange story came to be. When I'm making podcasts or documentaries, I do this thing where I, I look for small doorways into big worlds. Like what, what, what you're looking for is a um, small idea that you can describe in one sentence that makes people lean in and go, sorry, what? But it has to open up a bigger idea. It has to open up some bigger chapter of history or some untold story. And this kind of did that on crack. The mission began with a phone call. The writer and director I work with uh, at SBS, his name's Corin Grant, we made a film together a couple of years ago called Framed, which is about a theft of a Picasso from the NGV. I, I don't know, me and art crime is a weird thing. Anyway, he was calling around and he spoke to this art expert, and the art expert's like, look, what happened in Melbourne is weird, but what happened in WA was weirder. And he starts to tell Corin about this monastery that's in the West Australian bush that I've never heard of. And pretty much as soon as he had that conversation, Corin and I were talking, he's like, I had this weird conversation with an art expert who told me about a theft of, you know, what was, what was thought to be the most expensive religious art in Australia, but it was in the middle of a monastery built by exiled Spanish monks in the middle of the West Australian bush. And I, and I remember him saying this to me and I'm just being like, Corin, stop. That's what it is. We need to make a film about that. So The Mission is a, a three-part, one-hour documentary series that's airing on SBS on the 24th of October. And it's about in the mid-1980s, two not very good criminals uh, broke into a Spanish monastery that is in the middle of the West Australian bush that was built by exiled Spanish monks. And they stole what was thought to be the most expensive collection of religious art that this country has ever known. The thing is what they plan to do with it and how badly that goes. And then when you start scratching at that story, you realise that there's this whole history to that mission, that monastery, that hasn't properly been told. And it's layer upon layer of crime, and that's what the mission is. It's weird enough that there's a monastery in the middle of nowhere. Like, it's just weird, right? The more Corin and the team dug into it, the more we realised that this is just very strange. And it, at, from that beginning point, if you told me that it would end up with me standing in front of the Trump building in New York or in, you know, uh, you know, alleyways in Manila, I'd have been like, no, that's like, wh what? Why? There are so many crimes that have taken place in New North here and some range from the downright farcical, like this one, and some crimes which are horrific and evil. Well, it was set up for a purpose. It was, yeah. set, up, uh, it was set up by monks who wanted to convert the local indigenous people. And I think that kind of gives you a hint about where that story is going. Some people have incredibly negative uh, experiences, quite understandably, but some people still go, oh, it's a beautiful tourist attraction. You know, when things become tourist attractions, sort of history flattens around them. They become sort of simple and polite, and actually the history of that place is not polite. It's, it's pretty nasty. And I guess part of the goal of a, of a series like The Mission is to is to not pretend like those things ever balance each other or cancel each other, they simply coexist. And that's kind of the story of Australia, right? Like, we have a lot of stories laying on top of each other. And whenever somebody points out something bad about the history in this country, somebody, the, the, there's a certain kind of person whose first result, uh, resort is to go, yeah, but there's good things too. I'm like, that's true. But those things don't cancel each other out, they don't balance each other out, they simply coexist. There's Australia's Indigenous history, there's Australia's white history, then there's layers of immigration, like us, like, you know. So, sorry, there's room full of brown people. That's, that, that's what us means. Um, you know, like, we've all come here from different places, right? And so, those story, the, you know, there's not a most version, most important version of that story. They do coexist and they do overlap. And actually, one of the challenges of just Australia writ large is how do you... How, how do we sew those things together in a way that feels like there's a story here? Do we know what happened to the art? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And that, uh, you, do you, do you, yeah, okay. So, so uh, let's go one step yeah, back. Okay. Very valuable art has ended up in a monastery in the bush yep. in Western Australia. An amateur heist occurs where they're cut out of the frames. Yeah. Do, do you know, do we now, by the end of it, do we know <laughs> I how? love watching you do this. <laughs> Here's the thing, when you think about art crime, 
you immediately visualize this sort of like schmick Ocean's Eleven sort of heist thing. And the reality of it is, as I've discovered over the years of covering things like this, is that most of them aren't that. Most of them are chaotic and messy and they leave behind too many clues, particularly in this country when it's happened. And so I think a lot of this is about puncturing some of the suaveness of what people think of when they think of art crime. There's no question that what was done was valuable and like dramatic, like there's no questioning that. But it's not, it was not this clean cut Ocean's Eleven style thing, it was a mess. Well look, Mark, thanks so much for coming in to Happy and telling us about your new show. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me at Happy Mag. It's nice to be here. And I want to steal these lights. In fact, I may steal these lights. Sure. Cool.